Howdy y'all, welcome back. Thank you so much for being here. Today, I was diving into the history of suspension bridges and I came across a bridge and a photograph, this one, that absolutely astounded me and made me want to do a little bit more research. Now, as macabre as it sounds, this infamous bridge located in the city of Bristol, England, is a location that is deemed to be haunted by the local residents. It has an infamous history which is chock full of notoriety. The names that are discussed within the narrative, like Brunel, only amplify the questioning of the sheer immense nature of this structure, which seemingly, against the current narrative grain, has an abundance of what are called construction photographs. Albeit, we will look at these construction photographs and take them in with a grain of salt. I find the Clifton Suspension Bridge to be so fascinating because we're told this was built at the beginning of the industrial age, at least the first parts of the bridge, the base of the bridge, meaning that most of what we see was built using horses and carts and hand tools and manpower. When we look at the first images, what we see is fine masonry and brickwork, honestly what appears to be nearly flawless construction. This architecture, which when it was first photographed during this construction, quote unquote, already appears aged and weathered. It's significantly formed into the rock it is built upon, even at the time of the first photographs, as if the two had had much time together to adhere to each other and create a new form, a new shape, where we can hardly tell where the natural formation ends and the man-made construction begins. But there lies a question. How would this be possible if the construction we're looking at in the earliest photographs is only 10 to maybe 15 years old? These are incredibly revealing photographs, seemingly showing impossible architecture for that time period, said to be construction photographs, which lack any true equipment to explain the masterpiece we see in front of us. The images appear to show a much older structure during a reconstruction or renovation. However, within the first images ever taken of the Clifton Suspension Bridge, almost every image appears staged. The Clifton Suspension Bridge, when it was first designed in roughly 1830 or 1831, would have been one of the first suspension bridges in the world. However, the construction did not begin until five years later with an opening date in Bristol, England in the year 1864. The bridge is situated high over the River Avon, but was not the first epic bridge to cross that river in Bristol. The first bridge is identified as the original Bristol Bridge. Founded in the 13th century, the original Bristol Bridge crossed the River Avon and had what are called immense Tudor-style houses and shops built directly into the bridge's masonry. It must have been quite a masterpiece of the old world. However, apparently in the 18th century, this original Bristol Bridge was ordered demolished by the Crown for a series of smaller ones, leading to the Bristol Bridge Riots of 1793, followed finally by the construction of the Bristol Bridge, which still stands today. However, throughout all of this, a second, more lavish, more impeccable, more thoroughly breathtaking bridge with a relatively inventive new design was proposed as early as the year 1753. However, this bridge would not be completed until some years later. The idea was to construct a second bridge across the River Avon at a much more elevated, beautiful, yet dangerous to build upon location. The bridge was to cross the Avon Gorge in a location known as Vicks Rock. The Clifton Suspension Bridge, being one of the first and largest suspension bridges in the world up until that time, had an even larger and more robust original design, considered more lavish than the bridge which still stands today, with the original, unfulfilled blueprints drawn up by Isambard Kingdom Brunel. The Clifton Suspension Bridge plans were abandoned after Brunel's passing, having only been partially built, and were to be completed by the Clifton Suspension Bridge Trust who set up new architects who finished the bridge in the year 1864. The bridge deck is suspended by 162 vertical wrought iron rods in 81 matching pairs. It is 1,352 feet long, 31 feet in width, sitting 300 feet or more above the noted high water level of the River Avon. It is one of the longest of the parabolic arc chain type suspension bridges in the world. On December 8, 1864, the bridge was fully illuminated using electricity with a combination of four electric arc lamps. 
The earliest use of external electric lighting in Bristol and one of the earliest examples in all of England. The bridge has always been a toll bridge, apparently having revenues from the tolls being relatively minimal at first as there was not enough horse or foot traffic to the area. However, the tolls increased after 1920 with greater car ownership. The bridge has remained relatively untouched over the years and according to the narrative, it is nearly the same as when it was completed in 1864. With minimal wear and tear, 160 years later, while many steel buildings suffer to even last that long with renovations, this old world masterpiece only leaves us with more questions than we have answers. As discussed in my previous videos, our architect originally credited with this design is Brunel, who has many ties to the Industrial Revolution, including being credited with seemingly impossible designs of the mid-19th century. From the largest ships in the world to masterpieces of architecture like this bridge, we find Brunel had this sort of dedication, at least in the narrative, to the best of the world's creations, which at the time seemed well beyond the prowess of one man, even if he was one of the most educated and powerful in the world. It's as if Brunel inherited some sort of hidden ability, a sort of understanding or knowledge, which allowed for these gargantuan creations to occur under his watchful eye. Or maybe he was simply just an inheritor. The masonry of the immense Clifton Suspension Bridge tucked precariously into the mountainside over the River Avon, seamless as it may be, also appears significantly older than we are led to believe it is at the time of the first photographs in the 1850s and 1860s. What we see should be no older than roughly a decade in the construction photographs, yet to me, it appears well older and more aged than that. To imagine the primitive machines, horses and carts with early industrial technology, which somehow manufactured this incredible piece of architecture, I wonder whom was being utilized to ascend these suspension beams. How did they pull them together? What sort of equipment was being used for this massive structure to truly take shape? Because even in the construction photographs that we have and we have looked at today, all we see are materials with a handful of workers at most. We see no machines, we see no horses, we see no evidence that this massive base of the structure on either side of the Avon Gorge has been constructed recently or by the people in these photographs. To me, it appears that this location is weathered, aged beyond the reports we've been given. It appears as a residual evidence, seemingly from a time long ago, but the brunt of this construction was said to take place in the late 1830s and the early 1840s. So why, when we look at images from the 1840s and the 1850s, as we did throughout this video, does this new construction look so old? To cross over the River Avon, it's a stunning thought, and this collection of the oldest photographs honestly leaves me feeling like what we're looking at has a value beyond the current narrative's understanding. I feel a sort of significance, maybe dating back to Vic's rock or earlier, and it's mirrored by the first photographers in England who felt it imperative to photograph this feat of industrial age engineering, the Clifton Suspension Bridge. So I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below in regards to this bridge. This is a true old world masterpiece in my opinion, with architecture that leaves us with more questions than answers. Have any of you ever visited the Clifton Suspension Bridge? If so, let me know down below and I can't wait to hear your comments and talk to you on the next video. Before I chime out, I also wanted to say, if you enjoy these videos about the old world, about architecture of our past, about images from pre-1900, then I have a lot of other work you may enjoy. I have hundreds of other videos with thousands of photographs from different sites all around the world where we look at the oldest known photographs of those locations. So if you're not already, please consider subscribing to my channel. We are almost at 100,000 subscribers and I couldn't be more grateful for every single one of you. I can't wait to hear from you in the comments down below and I look forward to what we will do together in the future.